So just a quick walk around of this 2003 Auto Sleeper Dorset. It's basically the same as the symbol. It's a very familiar and popular model. Just the Dorset, the uh, did a higher and certain bits and bobs added. Um, it was a special edition for Marcus Motorhomes. So they added the they added the Fiat chassis, which is exactly the same as the Peugeot Boxer. It just has the later two litre diesel engine in. Uh, it's got cab air conditioning, alloy wheels, electric step. Just open the side door. inside now it drives nice this no rattles or shakes all the gears are smooth electric windows it's got the electric four-way mirrors power steering of course so obviously that swivels around you see seat cushion back in now so at the back you've got a, a three-point seat belt, side kitchen, and oh, the cooker is just spotless. Four burner gas hob, grill area, oven again spotlessly clean. Kitchen sink. You've got working blinds for every window, as well as the all important fly nets if you're travelling to Scotland for the midges. Even up above, and you've got the large hikey roof light. Close that down like so. Uh, the last owner's left the well, you've got a TV, oh, it looks like a DVD. The last owner's left that in. Auto sleep always leave that, so that's where you could put another TV with your main supplies as well as your 12 volt supply as well as a aerial. But either the last owner or the previous owner has, would you believe, put a very expensive satellite dish in. Now, there's a lot of instructions, so I'm not checking that. I don't know how these things work, but look at it. Wow. No reason to disbelieve that won't work. Would appear that that's, I don't know, is that locating satellites now? A set of instructions to go with it. Wardrobe, the little table, the large table is clipped in behind here. One, two clips. You've got both remote controls, one must be the remote. Uh, one must be the satellite and one must be for the TV. I'll break this video off shortly because WhatsApp only likes short videos. And there's your gas. So yeah, about that satellite. Look at this. We've got a big satellite system on the roof. There it is. That's a 360 degree bi-directional satellite dish. Wow. Okay, I'll make, make the next video. So, bodywork wise, it's fantastic when you consider it's uh, 2003, so it's what's that make it 18 years old? So, I think bodywork wise is very good. Just being very fussy, you could match, match in a stripe there. That's just the only part of the stripes that are spoiling it. Someone's probably been too aggressive with a power washer. Um, front end, you know, I've there's a couple of scratches on the passenger side, so I've had the wheels fully refurbished. Uh, front, nothing to report. Side, I think it was just that little dent. It's probably someone's backed into the wall, someone's backed in under the. Yeah, so just a little bit of it. You could probably pay for a dent, man, because it's not broken the paint. But that's about it, and there was a small scratch. Ah, yeah, there we go. I'm going to do something, and that's about it. That's it. It's all nice underneath. Yeah. 
So that's the exhaust for the Truma for the hot water. If it's on gas, that's heated on gas. You have got the option for electric. I'll show you that in a second video, but that's the exhaust. That's the inlet for the mains electric and the inlet for the fresh water. Driver's seat, passenger seat, armrests. Quick look under the bonnet while we're here. Well, nice underneath we've got valet puts covers over the mats, the mats are nice, and all the carpets are underneath with no stains or anything. Yeah, it's lovely. Uh, apparently that has only been on there six months, so you've got the new leisure battery which we've done on the habitation service, but you've got a new engine battery as there recently, so you're all set up really. Oil in there, water in there, and washer water. So the oil and filters have been changed. Right, so the leisure battery fits under the driver's seat. So if you pulled that forward, you would be able to get access to the leisure battery. That's a brand new one fitted. Uh, okay, let's go in the back and show you the wet room, toilet area and shower. Oh, while we're here, this is the Fetford cassette for the toilet. So, We've got two levers, as it were. Well, there. So you've got two chemicals, blue and pink. Pink for the stink, blue for the loo. So pink for the stink is for the uh, bowl, for the flush. So pink fluid in there and blue in here. Just press that button there and that pulls out. If for any reason that's solid, don't force it. What that means is the inside, the, the um, closure on the bowl is not quite closed. So make sure that's closed and that will come out. Never force anything. In fact, that goes for any single thing on a motorhome. You've also got the two carry bike Fiorma awning, uh, awning, uh, carry bike, and you've got the awning and I've done some pictures. Very straightforward in the to unwind. I've changed all these buttons and bezels as I always do on an auto sleeper. So these are all being replaced. Just freshens it up nicely. Protective on the shower tray, no cracks. Sanitized toilet. I think that was the only thing that the habitation guy had to change. Shower, hot and cold. And the auto sleeper overthink things, but you've got a privacy door. So you can clip that into there, just to there, and that creates more private area between this and the front room if someone's in the shower. Don't change it for any reason. Okay, next video to follow. Okay, so the first uh, quick video walk around. So this button will operate all the time, straightforward, the step. It's actually not that tall to get in there, but it's a nice little feature. So we're uh, straightforward. The electric master control panel, very straightforward by auto sleeper, just literally on and off. So you could actually control the lights and the leisure items, so your fridge as well as your, uh, uh, not the fridge, your leisure items, the lights and the water pump using the battery off the habitation side, i.e. the habitation battery, which we put a brand new one underneath the seat, so the leisure battery, or you can actually use it off the vehicle. Really not recommended, because obviously that is gonna drain the battery on the engine and that's not what you want, so really, never ever use that in an emergency i can't think for the life of me what would it be an emergency that you would use that because all you have to do is start the engine up the difference of a habitation battery the leisure battery that's designed you can fall asleep you can leave a reading light on no problem and the leisure battery is designed to go completely flat but it's separated from the engine battery so in other words if you fell asleep, left the lights on for a couple of days, you had a completely flat leisure battery. That's designed to discharge and charge from flat to full over and over again, no problem. An engine battery isn't. Obviously, if you leave it flat, you can charge it and it'll be all right. But it doesn't like recycling, whereas a leisure battery is designed to do that. So again, just really use the habitation side. 
very straightforward so on and off uh, you've got your water pump and you've got your lights normally i just leave the lights on all the time and just leave the pump off it's probably the thing that you're going to use the least and that'll just uh, operate all your lights I'll send a couple of videos because WhatsApp only likes short videos. So we've got the water basin, so it's got a new tap fitted, so you've got hot and cold there. You've got the toilet, it's all being sanitised, and push in here for the flush. We want some fluid in there. I'll see if we've got some spare fluid before the morning. Hot and cold shower. So there's that uh, that I showed you, that just clips around privacy on the back of the bathroom door. All right, so I'll close this video off and carry on again. So the passenger seat is a swivel, so it has that lever there is forward and back, and that is to swivel it round. All the paperwork, uh, I'll leave you the full logbook, you can post that up yourself. Um, uh, just keep hold of this and then you can do this yourself you can send it the old-fashioned way in the post or you can do that online but you keep this new vehicle new keeper slip and then you can tax it and it's immediately legal to use in your own name lots of paperwork full set of instructions for everything in the glove box is the all important auto sleeper chassis number and job number if you ever need any parts or any questions you just ring up auto sleeper quote those two numbers and they will know the bill date and everything about the vehicle so as I say, we just had it recharged last Friday, so you press there for the air conditioning. Five speed manual to engage reverse, it's that knob there. Power steering, electric windows, and you've got the four way mirrors. So you've got one, two, three, four, you just spin that round and that will adjust the top mirror and the bottom four mirrors. You've got a reading light here at the front. Above the cab. You've got the awning handle. Oh, you've got some extra thermal blinds for the front. Curtains, of course, that go all the way around. Most people just use the curtains on the front and just use the blackout blinds on the side. They've got their coil backed. So what that'll do is keep you nice and warm in the winter or cool in the summer. Okay. Just more storage space above the sink, uh, below the sink now. Got the uh, toasting grill. It doesn't look like it's been used. You've got the extra isolator switches, but you don't, that's a, an extra safety device if you wanted to not switch it off from the gas bulb. Normally you would need an extra if you didn't want to go outside, but on this particular one, you can actually access the gas bottle here. So you just, just wind it in there and that's switched off direct on the gas bottle. An extra main hook up. And below here, you've got, for the hot water, you can heat the hot water on this one. So just switch that down when it's on mains, that'll light up red and that will heat the hot water system on electricity, mains. 240 volts or well, you switch that lever there and the light illuminate green there and that will heat the gas if you're wild camping on gas um, you can actually use them both at the same time so if you're in an urgent rush for whatever reason for hot water you could put the electricity on as well as the gas this particular one has got the Aspasha expensive upgrade very unusual they normally have a Propex heating system so to heat in here blown hot air comes through there to heat you up but on this one it's the Aspasha system so that you just press on there that one's on and that now will heat up blow in off the diesel so the actual diesel in the fuel tank very economical they're the uh, well they're quite expensive all the uh, commercial vehicles use them on lorries so you can just, it'll take a, a, a minute or so, so you just press it in, it takes a minute or so to go through the cycle, then it clicks in and then it'll start blowing hot air from there. And if you was in the summer and you wanted a bit of, it's a bit of a gimmick really, because you just open a couple of windows or such, but if you wanted cold air blowing in, cold air, you can press that fan there. 
and then that's the thermostat and then just to switch it off there okay i don't think there's much else to show you you've just got a cupboard in here you've got the uh, mains supply there and the hookup cable just the storage underneath ah this seat actually you can gain the now i don't know whether you can hear that's been on about 30 45 seconds i don't know whether the microphone's going to pick up that that's just starting now to blow as i say it takes about a minute to go through the full cycle and that'll be blowing out toasty warm there soon so what was i coming back to the storage area so you can get it access by pressing that button move these two cushions or you just lift this up here and that gets access into the very big storage area under there. You shouldn't need access in there, that's for the hot water boiler for engineers to access. Uh, the only time you'd have to access there is to winterise it. So if you put your hand down there and shine a torch, there's a little le yellow lever in there and that'll completely drain the water down to winterise it. But hopefully we won't be needing that for a long time. Okay, let's just switch off the uh, diesel night heater. And just press off. Now, when you switch off, it won't immediately go off. It's got to go on a cool down cycle. Okay, so fridge is a three way fridge. What I do is always leave these in the on position. So you've got this one will only work on the 12 volt, not off the leisure battery, just when the engine's running. So in other words, when you're driving around, it'll be keeping it cold. When you're parked up, if you're plugged into mains, you've got the mains supply. And also, if you're wild camping, you've got it on gas. The reason I leave those on all the time is it will automatically, as you start and switch your engine off and drive around, it will automatically fridge it. And as soon as you plug in to the mains, it will automatically operate. So the nice thing is if you have it plugged in before you leave the house, in other words, if before you go away, That'll do two things. It'll be having your fridge fully charged or fully frosted as it were before you go away. And it will also be trickle charging and charging the leisure battery to tip top condition. So if you're at home, that's a nice feature to have it plugged in. If you're going away for a couple of days, that fridge is so well insulated that'll last you a couple of days with you starting the engine as well as having it fridged off the mains. And there's the freezer department. Another little trick that people do is take that door off or leave it. It's a bit of a gimmick really having a freezer. I don't think they're going to be having much in the freezer there. Uh, and then you get, in the, you get in the fridge super chilled off the freezer as well as off the fridge elements. Gas connection. You always leave that spark in. Turn that, push that in. Turn it round. And you hold it in. And when the gas is switched on. In fact, I just remember now, I put the gas on. Now, see, I'm holding it in and that's ignited. So it stopped flashing. The important thing is to hold it in for a few seconds, then let go and leave that in the on position, one position. What that will do then is automatically flash again, reignite if the pilot light blows out. So there is a hole there. You can just about see, you can just about see the blue pilot light there, but you know it's on because it stopped flashing. If it had a gust of wind, I'm out of breath again after this flaming jab. If it had a, a gust of wind, it would blow the pilot light out. So that's not ideal. You want it to reignite automatically. So I'm going to demonstrate that now. I'm going to turn off the gas and show you what would happen. And it relights again. So in other words, if it blew off with a, a big gust of wind, it would reignite safely. And there it is, back in again. So you just hold it in for a few seconds. Three, four seconds, let go, and it'll hold fire. Okay, we'll just switch that off. Clip there for the top. We'll just put the pump on. And we've got hot and cold water. Spin it around for hot. Three burner gas hob. It's a bit tricky to show, but there you go. That's all working, being tested out. Incidentally, the uh, gas 
regulator was changed to conform to latest regulations so that pipe's been changed as well as the regulator so you've got to uh, it been recently changed so you've got two remotes i assume one's for the tally and one must be for this fancy satellite dish it was about 1200 pound the bill there so that's a brucey bonus so there's a little table and the big table is uh, behind there wardrobe And there's that satellite system. Large hikey through. We've got the blackout line there. As well as the fly net, mid net, call it what you want. To open these, you just press the button there. Spin that round. Press the button again. Just pull this handle down. And then you can have the option of leaving it up like that all the time. Or... You can pull that handle down and just put it into the position there. You've got two little levers there and that will hold it into position. So you've got that much air, but it won't blow up, blow off rather. Or you can bring it down and on the position here, you can just move it slightly up. And it's just giving that little air in effect. So that should be waterproof, but you're just getting, so you're not going to get any condensation. So you've got a few options on there. Uh, same with all these, you just press them in there and that'll close and open up. And if you have this open, you can just, it says, you just push it forward and you can just tighten it up on there and that'll stay in position. So just push that back. Blackout blinds, just clip into position there, a little bit tight, that's how you want it, so it's not going to rattle or anything. And there it is. And you've also got, you can pull that down to the fly nets as well. So just pull those there, pull those there, and that. Now we'll separate them from the fly net. So yeah, at some stage they've had, oh, there's the remote control, so that must be, I bet that's signals for the satellite. I'm not sure, you'll have to read the instructions. But yeah, oh, it's a DVD player as well. So that's the TV that's been added. But here, this is normally the place that you would put an ordinary TV unit. So as opposed to a flat screen, you can put an ordinary 12 volt, TV system here. You've got the existing TV aerial, 12 volt supply, as well as mains supply. Obviously, when you're hooked up on a main supply. Three point seat belt to that seat, and you've got a lap belt there with a buckle there, and it's underneath there. So, to make the bed out, that lever there you press that lever down there and this just slides out comes to there and that cushion flops down into that back position this one you just press that lever down pull that forward and that slides all the way forward the passenger seat there swivels round um, so that gives a longer me me method and there's some filling cushions you pull the driver's seat forward and there's some filling cushions for there Okay, next video. So these three are just the three filling cushions that when that goes forward, one, two, three, and obviously then that will create a very large queen size. So I'll just put those three filling cushions underneath there in storage. Okay, so just showing the uh, Fetford cassette system. So you just press that lever there and that will then pull out. If that is solid for any reason, that means the pan inside is slightly open. So make sure it's completely closed inside and then you can press that and pull out. Never force anything. So if anything won't do, stop and think about it. Everything's designed in such a way. Um, so you put the fluid in here for the toilet. That's for your flush water. And then here, now in here, so blue, Blue for the loo, pink for the stink, as we say the caravan is around. So pink for the flush and blue for the loo. And this actually acts as a measuring cap. So just go in there, put some uh, blue fluid in there, and put it in there. And that. We'll keep it rightly so. Um, two back bike Fiona awning. So they just pull that clip there. That'll fold out and you've got two clips there. That'll hold a bike rack and you've got two clips for a bike. Uh, fridge covers, 
you've got the the mains hook up so once it's in it's nice and solid to remove it you press that lever down there and then with another hand that'll pull forward and then when you're on the road just clip that into place there so that's the exhaust vent for the hot water for the trumer on the hot water and that's the exhaust vent for the diesel aspasia heater and that's the uh, waste water and that's to insert the fresh water and i think that's about it any more questions we can show you on upon viewing and delivery.